السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is the third session of In the Names of Allah. Uh, I don't see any, oh, oh, some people are starting to appear now. Uh, wondering whether the connection is intact. But anyway, um, welcome Zabiba. Wa alaikum salam. That's Zabiba Hartman. Nasir Ahmed. Wa alaikum salam. Ramadan Mubarak. Sayyid Sardar. Florina Rahman, wa alaikum salam. Uh, Iqbal, Fuad Ismail. Welcome, welcome. Ramadan Mubarak to everyone. Inshallah, may Allah accept this Ramadan with its trials. Give us the full reward of purification from sin as well as grant us uh, Laylatul Qadr to be in worship at that time and as well as our prayers of Eid al-Fitr we pray that by that time the restrictions would have been relaxed somewhat so that, inshallah, we can uh, pray Eid al-Fitr together. Though, if the restrictions have not been uh, removed, <clears throat> Eid al-Fitr, though it is strongly recommended, it is a... Uh, not fard, it is not fard. So, if one remains home and prays there, there is no harm. Uh, you can't uh, the Salat al Eid. You know, we would just um, uh, we can't we can we can't we, we can't follow it, inshallah, because we are. At home, okay, I got signal that our recording is not um, working properly. All right, inshallah. Let us carry on then. I think it's uh, time. Let me keep my uh, in a good location where I can the time okay alhamdulillah in alhamdulillah nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nastaghfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdi illa fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ I'd like to welcome you all officially to the third session in the names of Allah. And after looking in the first session about Allah's instructions with regards to His names, which basically can be summarized in worshipping him through his names and looking at the instructions regarding the 99 names after clarifying that the number 99 is not a restrictive number, that Allah spoke about names which were kept with him in the unknown and unseen world. So 
he instructed us to count them and to guard them and to memorize them using different terminologies. And we concluded based on the explanations of scholars that what we are supposed to do in terms of applying them, you know, after understanding their meanings and believing in them and acting according, we act according by adopting what is self-applicable. Allah calls himself Al-Ghafir, the forgiving one, the all-forgiving. So we should be forgiving. We apply that name in our lives. When we reflect on how much Allah forgives us and how much we would like him to forgive us, then that should motivate us to be more forgiving to his creatures. Also, we should confirm those names which are unique to Allah and inapplicable to ourselves. We should understand them, as we said, understand the meanings, believe in them. Allah describes himself as Al-Muhi, the one who gives life. So, or Allah calls himself Al-Ilah amongst his names, Al-Ilah, God. How do you apply God to yourself? You can't. I mean, there are people in this world who have called themselves God. Sai Baba in India and others have claimed to be God. So, of course, we avoid this and avoid anything which would uh, give the attributes in their completeness of God to human beings. So, what do we do instead? We confirm the unique uh, divinity of Allah. We confirm it, we affirm it. And we'll be looking uh, at that in more detail because the first name that we'll be looking at will be the name Allah. Also, we said that if there is promise in the name of Allah, that should produce in us hope. And if there is a warning in the name, that should produce in us fear. And we should be between fear. Now, Having understood those general principles regarding the names, we're now going to look at the first of the names of Allah. The first in our series. As we said, we would try to cover all uh, 99. or And this 99 that we will be using will be uh, one already gathered by uh, scholars of the past and the present, you know, there is no specific 99 which excludes uh, all others. In fact, scholars in the past have gathered way over that number. Some scholars have gathered as much as a thousand names. But of course, uh, the 99, the key regarding these names is that the source of the names should be derived from the Quran and the Sunnah. That's the basic principle. The names should be derived from the Quran and the Sunnah because these are the two sources of revelation. Allah knows best what his names are. In other words, revelation should be given precedence over reason in this matter. We don't use our reason 
to decide what names we were going to call a law, you know, and what names we're not. As long as they're found in authentic hadiths or in the Quran itself, then that's the basis for it being a name among the names of Allah. So as I said, in this session, we're beginning with name number one, and that is Allah. This name occurs in the Quran some 2,602 times. It's the most frequently mentioned name of Allah in the Quran. The closest to that name number two, which is mentioned the second most in the Quran, is Ar-Rahim. And that is mentioned 114. Number three is Ar-Rahman. And that is mentioned 57 times. Half of the number of Ar-Rahim. And so on and so forth. So you can see the, the vast gap between the number of mentions of Allah and the next most mentioned name. That is telling us that it has a special place. And we'll be looking uh, some more at those uh, implications. But first and foremost, it is the proper name of God. It is the proper name of God. It's the absolutely unique name of God. And it's me, it, it contains within itself the meanings of all of the other beautiful, magnificent names of Allah. In fact, what we find is that whenever the name Allah is mentioned, it is described by adjectives taken from the other names. I mean, if we, if we look at the basic basmala, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, it begins in the name of Allah and then Allah's Allah is described as Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim the most beneficent the most merciful and there are many different translations for those two names but what you will not find anywhere in the Quran is where Another name is mentioned and then that name of Allah is described by Allah, that name. So this is unique. You, there are a number of verses in the Quran in which Allah uh, describes the name himself by other uh, characteristics found in other names, for example, or attributes. We can find in Surah Al-Hashr, where Allah says there, هُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ هُوَ الرَّحْمَنُ الرَّحِيمُ he is Allah, besides whom there is no God worthy of worship. He is the knower of the hidden and the visible, and he is the most beneficent, the most merciful. So all of these uh, attributes, Alim al ghaib knower of the unseen, was shahada and the seen, 
the visible and the most beneficent, the most merciful. All of those are descriptions of Allah. So this is this puts the name Allah in a special place. And it's, it's also why the majority of scholars of uh, the past and the present agree or hold that the name Allah is Allah's greatest name, which uh, the Prophet ﷺ spoke about uh, as having the ability to bring for the one who calls on him by that name, his greatest name, to get your du'as answered. Using Allah in your du'a, mentioning his name as the greatest name, this ensures answering of our du'as. And <clears throat> and if we look actually in the various narrations which spoke about Allah's greatest name, you'll find that only the name Allah is found and mentioned in all of the narrations. It is also the name which Allah chose to be in our declaration of faith. So that the Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed, Allah has made the hellfire prohibited for whoever says, La ilaha illallah, desiring only the pleasure of Allah. This is our declaration of faith. La ilaha, he could have said, Illa rahman There's no God worthy of worship but the most beneficent, Ar-Rahman, or Illa rahim or other names. But he chose in our basic declaration of faith, the basic declaration of faith given to all of the prophets. From the time of Adam down to Muhammad wasallam, they all taught this one fundamental declaration of faith. La ilaha illallah. And there are other factors uh, linguistic etc factors like uh, for example when we call on Allah using any of his uh, other names like Ar-Rahman we in Arabic this is unique in Arabic it's not really notable in English but in Arabic you say Ya Rahman you don't say Ya Ar-Rahman or Ya Rahman, no. You say Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, no, not Ya Ar Rahim or Ya Rahim. But when we want to say Ya Allah, it's Ya Allah. We don't remove the Alif Lam from it, <clears throat> which some scholars hold is a ba basis for the root of the word they they hold among them grammarians like Sibawe who was a, a great one of the greatest uh, arabic grammarians who is of persian origin that's why his name is Sibawe and for those people who think that when you accept islam you must change your name know about Sibawe anyway the point is that uh, they held that the name Allah came from Al-Ilah and it was a contraction from Al-Ilah to Allah. You know, we have words uh, being contracted uh, because of quickness in speech. You know, it is becomes it's. You know, it happens in virtually all languages. You have these contractions. So, there's, so they suggested that. Although many other scholars also held that it is a word without root or derivatives. It's a unique word, standing by itself. So, 
the meanings, as we mentioned earlier, the meanings of all of the other names can be found in the name Allah. They're all encompassed in it. And that's why when they're expressed in the Quran or the Sunnah, they are expressed as descriptors or descriptions of Allah. Now, with regards to the application, how do we ap apply that name? And we spoke about it briefly before. It is not something that we try to take on his qualities. No, this is not applicable here. Instead, we affirm his uniqueness and we worship him through the mention of his name, understanding him to be the source of all help, of all guidance, of all knowledge, of all power, etc., etc. So, as a result, we find the example given to us by the Prophet ﷺ, in which he basically required us to mention on a daily basis the name of Allah before doing anything of importance, any of the, the acts of our day, you know, beginning with Bismillah, this was his uh, per, uh, personal recommendation, instruction to Muslims. So we find that before we eat, we are told to say Bismillah. And if we forget to say Bismillah when uh, we start to eat, then we should say Bismillahi fi awwalihi wa akhiri in the name of Allah at the beginning and the end. So Allah has had us uh, mention the name before we eat uh, for a variety of different benefits that can come out of it. Whether it is reminding the believers that whatever they eat is from Allah, or it is reminding them to question, is this meal uh, halal? Does it contain anything which is displeasing to Allah? And thereby, you know, causing us to make certain decisions with regards to what we're going to eat. And among the first acts that we do in the day is Salat al-Fajr. And before the Salah, we have Wudu, the preparation, step number one for Salah, connected to Salah. As the Prophet ﷺ had said, La salata liman la wudu ala. That salah without wudu is invalid. But he also went on to say, Wala wudu a liman lam yadhkur ismallahi ta'ala alay. Wudu is not valid for one who does not mention Allah's name on it. Actually, most people are not even aware of this. And um, we are missing out in our ignorance from this guidance from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we should remember to say Bismillah before our wudu starting the wudu. This is all to put us in the proper frame of mind with regards to wudu. Because what we tend to do is only focus on the cleaning aspects of wudu. So it's the external. We make wudu, we wash our mouths or put water in a 
noses, wipe our heads, wash our hands, wash our feet, you know, and it's about completing that. We know it should be done properly. We shouldn't miss parts, etc. And that tends to be the focus. But actually, by saying Bismillah before it, it is stressing that there is a, a spiritual uh, side, a spiritual element to wudu that we should be conscious of when we're making the wudu. And that spiritual element, we know Prophet Muhammad told us that when one makes wudu, the water which drops from his or her limbs, from your hands, from your face, from your feet, that water, the sins that we have accumulated are falling off our bodies in that water. So we should be conscious that this physical act of purification is also a spiritual purification. And if we are able to do that, and this is one of the goals that we should try to set for ourselves in this Ramadan, to make the wudu unique. Make the wudu like we never made it before. To be conscious in our wudu before heading to the prayer. So that when we enter into the prayer, we have already prepared ourselves spiritually, conscious of our purification acts in washing ourselves prior to the prayers. So obviously that is going to change the nature of our prayer. Because if, as we do right now, you know, it's time for prayer. We go running, we'll do quickly, bam, prayer. But in that prayer, we end up thinking about the things that we were doing before the prayer or about the things that we're going to do after the prayer because we're still in the worldly frame of mind. We're reciting and we're not even conscious of what we're reciting. Sometimes uh, we forget our rakat, you know, how many units have we prayed and, you know, a lot of confusion there. We don't have calm minds in which we pray in such a way which is focused on the worship. Of Allah. So let us commit ourselves to making wudu as it was meant to be. Begin with Bismillah, as the Prophet instructed. Then he went on to tell us when we leave our homes, of course, now with COVID 19. We should minimize, but in any case, when we leave our homes, we should say, Bismillahi tawakkaltu ala Allah. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. This is what the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to say. Bismillah. Again, to put ourselves in the correct frame of mind, spiritual, because we're out, we're doing a physical act. But to make that physical act an act of worship, we add the Bismillah and that turns that strictly physical act of walking out of the house into an act of Ibadah. And basically, adding of the Basmala, Bismillah rahman rahim or Bismillah or Allahumma, adding the name of Allah to whatever we're doing, this, in fact, turns our 
physical acts into spiritual acts with the physical component. The Prophet ﷺ also uh, told us in a variety of uh, circumstances, you know, which are related to treatment of ailments that we are faced with, whether they are physical ailments, where he told us to put our hand on the place where it ails us and to say Bismillah three times and other statements. Furthermore, for Ruqya, a form of exorcism, for the effects of envy, the evil eye, etc., satanic forces affecting us. The, the Prophet ﷺ taught us to recite uh, prayers of exorcism which began Bismillah Arqiq Min Kulli Shay'in Yu'dhik and so on and so forth. In the name of Allah, I exorcise you from everything which harms you etc etc so we find these uh, duas for exorcism beginning consistently with bismillah and of course when we come when we are coming back home the prophet sallallahu told us also to say bismillah walajna in the name of Allah, we entered the home, we've come, come back home, and in the name of Allah, we exited. And even prior to sexual relations with one's husband or wife, the Prophet ﷺ told us to say, Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaitan. In the name of Allah, remove or distance Satan from us. And he went on to say that whoever uh, says the dua, the meaning is in the name of Allah, O oh Allah, divert Satan from us and from what you have provided us. And the child is destined for them, Satan will not be able to harm that child. And also, prior to going to sleep, we're taught by the Prophet ﷺ to say, Bismik Allahumma Amutu wa Ahya. In your name, O Allah, I die and return to life. So, from the time we wake up in the morning with our prayers to the time we go to bed at night with our prayers before sleep. The Prophet ﷺ instructed us to mention the name of Allah. So this is where the benefit lies, that we turn acts. Normally going to sleep is going to sleep. That's a physical act. All creatures basically go to sleep. But it's turning that physical act, which we do every day, into an act of worship in keeping with the Quranic uh, advice, قُلْ إِنَّ salati Say, indeed, my prayers. وَنُسُكِي My sacrifices. وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ My living and my dying are for Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. This is the general concept that every Muslim should have. All aspects of life become worship when we are conscious of Allah and when we do whatever we do according to the guidance given to us by Rasulullah. So this 
is the conclusion of the first name. And I know you're probably wondering, well, if we're taking one session to do one name, I think we'll, we're going to need uh, 99 days, like three months to get through the 99 names. However, we will move at a faster pace in tomorrow's session. We'll be taking two names and uh, if time permits, more. But we'll start to pick up the pace, uh, inshallah, as we move along. So the first of the names, name number one, Allah. The greatest name of Allah. As we add the greatest verse in the Quran, Ayatul Kursi. And what is Ayatul Kursi about? It's about describing Allah. And the greatest chapter or a chapter worth one third of the Quran, reading it, it contains one third of the meanings of the Quran, is Surah Al Ikhlas or Surah Tawheed, the chapter Kun Hu Allahu Ahad, which is the description of Allah, His Ahadiyya, His uniqueness, and so on and so forth. So the purpose of studying the names is not to memorize them, put them up on the wall, buy placards or small amulets that we hang in our cars, etc. The 99 names of Allah will save us. These written representations won't save us at all. If they serve as reminders for us to reflect on the names of Allah, Alhamdulillah, that's a good thing. But if they're just kept and we believe that it's going to protect us so that if we had it hanging in the car and one of our kids took it down, or broke it or whatever, and we have to drive and we don't have it and we're now worrying, looking from right to left and wondering what, when is the accident going to happen. This is telling us that we actually are now engaged. We are attributing to that writing, that hung amulet, a means to protect us. Knowing the meanings of the names, and applying them in our lives where applicable. This is what will save us. Living in accordance with the names of Allah. Okay, we'll stop here and uh, take some questions before my phone battery runs out. So, if any of you have any questions you'd like to forward them now, you're welcome. Wa alaikum salam, Sister Alva, Zahra. The questions are not uh, coming up on my screen here. Uh, Assalamu alaikum from Kosovo. And to Kosovo. Uh, our brother asked me, why don't you write a book? I've read most of your books and why don't you write a book on this topic? <laughs> well, that was the plan way back in 2006 when I first started preparing. But uh, life gets busy and there are so many other things, setting up the university and everything else. Uh, make, made it very difficult. Uh, 
Um, we look for questions. Uh, Sister Zabiba is mentioning that she's not a man, she's a woman. <laughs> I'm sorry if I mistakenly refer to you as brother, but uh, I, the name Zabiba is clearly a female name according to the Arabic system anyway. Uh, but this question, Mahmoud, he's asking, is it okay to address a person as Sami? instead of Abdusami. Well, I don't know of any name by that uh, uh, spelling, Abdusami. Oh, oh Sa you mean uh, Samir. Samir, the all-hearing, uh, all Allah's name, As-Samir, As-Samir or Al-Alim. So to call the person Samir, no, this is not good. This is not appropriate. But we should be careful because this is part of distorting of, of Allah's names. You know, it's not appropriate. We can find some other nickname to call them. Uh, brother, uh, sister Samra Javid is asking, can we invoke the names of Allah in our dua? Does it have more effect on our dua? No, it's, it's, it's very good to do that. You know, um, but of course the names should uh, be related to what you are uh, asking for in the dua. You know, we, we use the name, you know, for example, Al-Mannan, you know, Ya Mannan, you know, the, the one who gives over and over. Again, you know, please give me, you know, strength, uh, guidance, etc. You know, so we try, you use the name not as an object, that's something you just stuck in your dua, but it, it is connected, its meaning is connected to the dua that you're making. Um, uh, you, Brother Milad Asad, are the names of Allah written in order? Well, I, I don't know. Um, the ones which are written in the um, back of uh, certain printings of the Quran, they've added it to the back. Um, that's from a particular hadith found in Tirmidhi and uh, Ibn Majah. But that hadith, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Imam Tirmidhi himself said it was a weak hadith. And as such, it's not surprising to find that it contains names which are not among Allah's names. And there is missing from it names which are of, from Allah's names. So it's not a really Nur Haima Makabago from uh, Kiz Kizan City, uh, Philippines. Wa alaikum salam. Our brother Riaz is asking for us to all to pray for. For him and for Kashmir, he's from Kashmir. May Allah protect Kashmir uh, from destruction, from harassment, from occupation, etc. And uh, make it uh, a Mecca for Muslims. 
that again it will be a place where Muslims can go and come freely as part of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, Shahul Hamid is asking, Allah uses two of his names in most of the ayahs in the Quran. What is the reason behind that? Well, you know, Ghafoor uh, Rahim, uh, this is a, probably the most uh, combined pairs of names uh, found in the Quran, but I don't know if most of the ayahs involve two names. Uh, that's something I didn't research, it wasn't an issue. But we'll be looking at ayahs with double names. But you know, when Allah says He's Ghafoor, forgiving, or Rahim, and merciful, that uh, it is telling us on one hand not only does he forgive our sins but that forgiving of sins is from his mercy and there are many mercies that he puts in our lives in one way or another you know and um, so the combination is a reminder of both aspects of his names that we should turn to him in forgiveness and he will forgive us out of his mercy uh, sister Zinat Shah is asking about the tafsir I was writing well to do the tafsir of the whole Quran, that is a challenge in and of itself. Um, I've published tafsirs of different parts of the Quran. Uh, actually, tafsir of Surah Al Kahf and um, uh, and some other surahs are, should come out, inshallah, sometime this year in the ebook format. Uh, as well as hardback for those who uh, wish to hardback. Yasin also, Tafsir, the, as a text by itself, uh, is ready for publication. Inshallah, hopefully it will come out this year. Uh, Agite Ibrahim is asking, is the invocation of the name of Allah before any physical activity automatically turns it into an act of worship? Yes. If you mention the name of Allah, that is Bismillah. You're saying that you're doing this in the name of Allah. And as I said, you need to add to it, of course, that you're doing it in accordance with the way of Rasulullah. See, the, you need these two things. One, for worship to be acceptable to Allah. One, one should be doing it for the sake of Allah. One should be conscious of Allah in doing it. And on the other hand, it should be done according to the instructions given to us by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, Invoking the name of Allah while doing an act which is displeasing to Allah is obviously not going to turn that act into worship, is it? So it's that proper combination of consciousness of Allah and acting it in accordance with the messenger of Allah's guidance. Uh, Aisha Sadat asks, without wudu, bismillah, is wudu not okay? Well, I mentioned the hadith. 
That was the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Scholars have said, you know, that uh, the wudu is not complete. Right? The, the full reward of the wudu will not be achieved. That with the bis basmala before, in the beginning, then that sp spiritual component added will complete the reward. So it is incomplete. Tariq is asking a question about Taraweeh. As we said, you know, our questions should be related to the topic of the lecture. This is not an open session for questions on anything and everything. Uh, you did mention you're sorry, it's off topic. Um, but uh, your question, I'll just answer it, but please uh, avoid this. Uh, is it okay to pray Taraweeh online? The Imam will be online also. No, it's not okay. You pray Taraweeh, which is Tahajjud, pray it in your home with your family. You don't have to be in the masjid behind an imam. And definitely, if the imam is online, you're not behind him. You could be in front of him. You could be, you know, anywhere in relationship to him. So this this positioning, you know, scholars in general hold that, you know, unless, unless you're either within a couple of meters of the imam, or the jama'ah, your prayer is not going to be acceptable. You know, this was the issue people had with uh, uh, praying in, in Mecca, at the Kaaba. They would sit in their hotels and pray there. Um, behind the imam there at the Kaaba. It was not acceptable. You know, otherwise... Then the whole issue of praying behind an imam loses its whole meaning. Anyway, back to our uh, lecture. Uh, can you still say bis basmala or bismillah even while? making wudu in the toilet. Well, you see, this is a figure of speech. You're not in the toilet, right? You're in the area of the toilet. And using the basmala in the area of the toilet is permissible. Prophet Muhammad used to uh, use the, the, the toilet or go to the toilet or relieve himself because that's really what it is. There was no toilet per se in those days. It's just out back in the bush, you know, over the, the sand dune. He would go and after relieving himself, he would step aside and ask for water. Anas ibn Malik would bring it and he would make wudu. Saying Bismillah, only a foot away from where he defecated or urinated or whatever. So, you know, we have taken the toilet which used to be out back in the bush. We made it into a little house. And from there, we took that little house and we put it inside of the, the house, the actual house. And from being in one little room by itself, we joined it with the other room that we used to wash the things with, you know, the sink and water was there. And we put it all together. So now we have the toilet has been brought into the home, into the house, into the same room that we uh, make wudu, uh, etc. Whatever is not permissible on the toilet 
is impermissible while you're actually in the toilet. That's what it means. So you don't consider yourself, okay, when you go and actually sit on the toilet seat, yeah, this is not the time to be mentioning Allah's names and things like this. But if you're at the basin washing your hands and making wudu, mentioning Allah's name there is perfectly okay. Uh, question Mahmoud Hussein Suhail is asking what is the greatest of the names of Allah? It is Allah, the proper name of Allah. That is the greatest of the names. I know some others say it's who, Hua. And so you have some groups that will be repeating his name over and over again in their adhkar, their dhikr. They would say who, 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 who. And when you get a whole room of 50, 100 people saying who, 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 sounds like wolves, madmen. This is not dhikrullah. Hua is not one of the names of Allah. It is a pronoun. It's not a name. Hua by the name of Hua or Hua means he that means she you know anybody who called himself she or he these are not names please um our sister Zabiba Hartman uh, the problem I have is I don't know how to use the names of Allah for which dua any book you can recommend well you know the books as I said uh, by Sheikh al Uthaymeen and, and others uh, modern books they have compiled the names of Allah and Describe them, explain them, etc. You know, uh, you you'll be able to find guidance there, inshallah. And if you follow the series, of Allah's name prior to it to apply it from today onwards 